Let's say you're after a new family workhorse. You're faced with a dead simple choice. You can either buy an old banger and save the money for a rainy day, or you can blow the piggy bank and get the best thing that you can afford. Option one will probably bring you somewhere like this. Volvo 940 Estate in green. I bought it last week for 695 quid, and let me tell you, it was a steal. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It has electric windows, even heated seats, and a vast cargo area. The 2.3-litre engine is never going to break any land speed records, but it's never going to break full stop. Like most Volvos, it's built like a brick... um... toilet, and is a thoroughly excellent way to transport a family. Option two, the one that involves emptying your savings account, could get you something like this. A Renault Modus. Bought it also last week for four and a half grand, and it is also a steal. It's only three years old, has clearly been cherished, has clever functions like a boot chute, and even blinds for the back windows. Most temptingly of all, it was the first ever Super Mini to be awarded a maximum five-star safety rating from Euro NCAP, the European New Car Assessment Programme. It too is a thoroughly excellent way to transport a family. Now, here's a question for you. Imagine these two cars collide head-on, each travelling at 40 miles an hour. Think about you and the person you care most about in the whole world being involved in a crash. The question is, which one would you prefer to be in? So come on then, which one would you choose? Because this really could be a life or death decision. And don't spend too long working it out because girls allowed won't all fit inside. It has to be someone that you, you really care about, like your mum or one of your kids, or that mate that looked after you when you had that funny turn in Amsterdam. Big old banger or state-of-the-art modern car? The estate that looks like it's built from girders or the super mini SWAT that's passed its safety exams with flying colours? Where would you want to sit? Frankly, it's something even the experts are unsure about. But in a world's first crash test, we're going to find out. You see, in a few minutes, these two cars will be hurled together at a closing speed of 80 miles an hour, which is going to come off best. Ladies and gentlemen, fait vos jeux. That's French for place your bets. Of course, the Volvo was built in a time before NCAP even existed, so it's got no official safety rating. But it has got one thing on its side, size. How can something as dainty as the Modus ever stand up to a collision with this Scandinavian brute? In its day, the 940 won awards for safety, but since then, the game has moved on massively with stuff like seatbelt pretensioners and intelligent airbags. But have things advanced enough? After all, at one and a half tonnes, the Volvo is ready to plough through anything in its path. Well, the Modus didn't get five stars for nothing. It may look cute, but it's actually exceptionally strong in the body. When they crashed this thing into a concrete block at 40 miles an hour for the frontal impact test for Euro NCAP, this driver's footwell didn't deform at all. So, the big old Volvo against the clever little Renault. Hopefully, you've now decided which one you'd trust with your life, because we're just about ready for the Big Bang. Have you made the right decision? Well, stick around, because after the break, we'll tell you whether you live or die. Welcome back to the exact spot where in just a few minutes there'll be an awfully big mess. You see, look, look over here. See that tiny little super mini? Well, in a minute that's going to come down here at 40 miles an hour and this hulking great Volvo, you know, those kind of things you see mums driving around in, that's also going to be coming down here at 40 miles an hour and they will meet here on this blue line at a closing speed of 80. Think about that, 80 miles an hour. You remember that choice we asked you to make earlier about which of these two cars you'd rather be in? Well, to help you visualise the results of that decision, we've put two crash test dummies in the front seats of each of these cars, just to represent you and the person that you love most in the world. Listen, this is a world's first crash test. We've never done this before. We don't know what's going to happen. The experts don't know what's going to happen. 
Oh, God, that siren means this is a very bad place to stand right now. Just monkey. So, which car came off better in the crash? Well, a quick look at what had been the fronts of the two cars made the result very, very clear. OK, so this is the modus. And you can see here, this is the front bumper beam. And the impact was on this half of the car, so very specifically here. And what's happened is, it's dissipated the energy of that crash straight across the whole front of the car. If you look at it, it could almost have been in a full-on, head-on crash. It's got rid of the whole front of the car. You look at this Volvo, and just the right-hand side of that car has just disappeared. That front wheel is roughly in the driver's footwell, so that's where his feet should be. The overhead view shows how easily the very stiff modus punches through the Volvo. While the nose of the Modus has mostly kept its shape, the Volvo has crumpled and half its nose has just disappeared. It's extremely hard to make small cars safe, but the Modus is constructed using very high-strength steel that channels the energy through the sides and subframe rather than the occupants. That modus has basically used the entire front side of this Volvo as, as another crumple zone. It's, all that energy has pushed right into the car, and you can see it's just gone straight into the driver's side. Look, look at this door. Well, if you can talk, call it a door. Let's see if we can... Right, come here, come here. Look. It's pushed the whole of the front of the car up into here. The dash has moved backwards. You can't even see his feet. That means his legs have been crushed, serious lower leg injuries. All of the steering wheels moved. Obviously, there's no airbag. So the chances are he's probably impacted the steering boss, which is head injuries. If a fireman came to cut him out of here, this is a job where they're going to be cutting him out. It's really a bit of a mess. If we come back over to the modus, Immediately, we can see we've actually got a door. Let's just... Yeah, it opens. You can see the wing's been a bit bent, and so... We're going to have to open it a bit like that, but... Come here, let's have a look. You can see that there's been much less intrusion. This guy's completely got his lower legs. It looks like he'll be able to walk out of here. He may have some lower leg injuries, but they're a lot less severe than the person in the Volvo. The airbags are deployed for both the driver and the passenger over there, and because the dash and the steering wheel haven't deformed or moved, they've probably hit them in quite an agreeable way, meaning they probably haven't got head injuries or chest injuries, certainly not as severe as the person in the Volvo. NCAP star ratings are only considered relevant when comparing cars of a similar size, as traditionally, the heavier car is always deemed to hold the advantage in a head-on crash. In this test, at least, we've shown it may be time to rethink that convention.